This demonstration shows you how to use the Debian Live image. Right now I'm displaying uh, sev several items in the system. The first one is an internal hard drive that is about 20 gig large. The second one is a approximately 2 gigabyte SD card and the third one is a 4 gigabyte compact flash card. The first one obviously is an internal hard drive that might have an operating system installed and I'm not going to mess with it. The second one, which is an SD card, contains the Debian Live image. Um, th I will show you how to burn it later on. And the third one, the 4 gigabyte hard drive or compact flash card, is going to be our persistent partition or it will house the persistent um, partition. The first one that I'll boot from is number 2. So I'm just pressing 2. When you boot into the Debian Live CD or image, you will see the screen. The first option assumes that we already have a persistent partition and we'll look for it. The second option will not look for the per persistent partition and that is the option that I will use right now. And Let's go ahead and get into the um, live distribution without using the persistent partition. You will see a whole bunch of messages as the system starts up. Uh, most of these messages, you know, you can just ignore them. Um, the error messages will be highlighted in red. And most of the time, even if you see an error, it is not the end of the world and the system will start up just fine. And right now it's switching to its graphical mode. When you see the graphical mode, it will ask you to log in. Only one user is set up from the live image itself. And the name of the user is user. And so is the password of this default user. So just type uh, user, U-S-E-R, as the password and click login. The system will give you an error message or a warning message um, to say that Deb Live, which is the name of the machine, the host name, does not have an internet address. That's fine. You know, we can just click continue anyway, and I can show you that you know it really does not pose a problem later on. And because this is the first time we start up the system, it wants to ask whether we want to set up the panel. It's really handy to have a panel set up, so we'll just go ahead and use the default configuration. This screen here, this portion, you know, shows you tips and tricks of using XFCE, which is a windowing system. We can close it. And right now we are using the Debian Live image. We are not using any resources whatsoever on the internal hard drive at all. And on this side, you will see all the system resources. We see the 1.7 gigabyte file system, which is the um, live image itself. And we see a live dash RW um, drive here, which is our other drive. What we'll do now is we will go ahead and use a tool to repartition that drive. And the tool that we're using is called, you go to Okay, let me start it from the beginning. You go to Applications menu, and then go to Settings. Under Settings, we go to GPartEd. GPartEd is a partition editor, and it's graphical. But before you can get in, it will ask you for the administ administrative password, which is the password of the root account. By default, the live image has a default password for root as ball, as in root ball. So we just type in B-A-L-L, -L, click OK, and it should start up the application. There you go. Now, first of all, you want to make sure that you click the drop-down box here to see all the drives that are currently connected to the system. You can see the first one has 20 gigabytes, the second one has 1.65, and the last one has 4 gigabytes. Remember, the first one is our internal hard drive. Most likely, 
you will also see this but with a much larger capacity because that's your internal hard drive. The second one and the third one may swap. It depends on how you connect the, um, the flash drives or external hard drives to the system. But what we want to do is to select the last one, SDC in this case, which has four gigabytes. And this one is already formatted to this label. But let's go ahead and redo the whole process here. The first thing we want to do is to go ahead and delete this partition. Now before you do something like this, you definitely want to make sure that there's no use useful information on this drive or on this partition that you're deleting. And then the second thing we want to do is to click the unallocated area, right click, and then click new. And we are going to create a new partition. The system or the software automatically assumes that you want to use the maximum amount of space, so it goes from um, the beginning all the way to the end. In, and most of these options are exactly what you wanted, except for the file system. We want to select extension 3 as our file system because extension 2 does not have journaling and extension 3 does. Extension 4 is newer, so you know I'm just thinking that it may not be as stable as extension 3. So I pick extension 3 here. And the last step is to specify the label. We had it right from the beginning anyway, because the label needs to be live, L-I-V-E, hyphen, R-W, oops, R-W, like that, and click add. And you can see that it's almost done instantaneously. But this actually is not done yet, because what we are doing right now is to specify a bunch of commands that is currently queued um, to be executed. So right now, if I exit from this program, nothing is actually done to the drive, which is good. So now, let's double check this is in fact the drive that we want to modify. And then we can click the check mark here to apply the operations. So let's go ahead and click the check mark. And it gives you one last warning before you destroy the partition. And it's all done. We can close this and close the application itself. So we are pretty much done for this particular step because all we want to do is to create a live um, a persistent partition with this step here. So we'll go ahead and go back to Applications menu and then go to Logout and specify Restart. When we restart, you know, because I'm using a virtual machine that is not capable of scanning the hard drive to see which the first which one is bootable first, I have to manually type in the second one. But you usually do not have to do this because your BIOS should be able to scan for the first bootable hard drive. So we specify two and we get back to this menu. But this time we instead of using non persistent, we'll pick the first option which is persistent. And you will see the messages that it pops out are pretty much the same, except it has a long wait um, right about, no, not here, but a little bit later. It's looking for a persistent partition, and it's giving it enough time for all the USB devices to register. And that's why it takes a little bit of time yeah, in that particular step. All right, it's moving on, and I think it found the live partition, I mean, the the persistent partition. And you can see that it, it pops up exactly the same thing. There's no change from the previous one, except for one thing that I will show you later. So we go ahead and log in as user again, and the password once again is user, 
U A U S E R. You click login. It will give us exactly the same messages as last time. And that's because even though we did go through the configuration last time, there was no place to save the configuration in the previous attempt. The live image itself is actually a read-only device, and as a result, there's no way for me to save the settings back to what it was, uh, save it back to the live image. But this time, because we have a persistent partition, everything that we save will be saved. And you can see that this time it looks a little bit different. If you remember last time, right about here, we have the live dash rw drive appearing as a drive. This time it disappeared. And that's because it is now currently used, being used as the persistent partition already, and it is now hidden. We can go to the commands. Um, we can go through a few commands to ch double check to make sure that the live put the, pers the persistent partition is now effective. The first command you can try is call mount. When you type mount, it gives you a lot of information, but the one that is the most important is this one here. It shows that SDC1, which is the drive that we repartition, is now mounted to live that live slash cow. Cow stands for copy on write, which basically means we can change the file system, but the change is not overwriting the original system um, that is read only. It is actually creating a new file when we overwrite something. And so this is the first clue that we have just uh, successfully used a persistent partition. The second thing we can do is to do something like this. Let's go ahead and change to the super user. SU changes us to the super user, which is the root account. And we specify the password, which is ball, B-A-L-L. -L. And now we have elevated privileges. privileges. The first thing we want to do is to check the time. You can use the command date to check the time. It is reporting that it is 7.29 AM and but look at the time zone. The time zone is all incorrect. It is UTC, which is um, Universal Time something, which I cannot remember. But this is not my local time. And even though the type is correct, it really is 7:29:01 if you are living in England around the uh, Green Greenwich um, median timeline. Uh, but locally, which is in Sacramento, that's not the actual time. So one thing we want to do is to change that. And to change that, we have to run this command, dpkg-reconfigure. And the package that we are trying to, trying to reconfigure is called tzdata. And now it gives us a few options. We want to specify US and not Pacific, because if you select Pacific, it will think that we are in Asia somewhere. So we definitely don't want that. So we click US. And within US, you just pick the time zone. We'll pick Pacific here. And it has now changed the time. We run the command again, date. And we verify that it is midnight, uh, half past midnight local time. And everything is good. So we'll go ahead and get out of the command line interface. You can type exit. But we have to do it twice because we have to do it once from the root account. And then we have to do it another time from the regular user account. Oh, the other thing that you probably want to do is to change the password of the user account. So to do that, you have to run the command called passwd password. And you have to supply the current password first, which is user, U-S-E-R, press enter. And now you have to select a new password. The new password, unfortunately, um, Linux is quite specific about you know how hard the new password has to be. So you have to think of something that has uppercase, lowercase, ex uh, um, uh, punctuations, and uh, also um, digits. So you got to make it more difficult, otherwise it won't let you pa get past this part. The reason why you might want to change your password is because everyone who uses the live image is going to have a default password of user, U-S-E-R. 
So that means if you run the live image on your actual computer that is connected to the network, um, other people can log in as user using just the default password of user, which is probably not cool because if they can log in as user and they can you, as you change the super user using you know ball as the password, then they can they have access to your entire system. So what we want to do also is to change the root password. So once again, we change back to super user, change uh, specify the current password which is ball. And then we run the command again, PASSWD. The funny thing is, it does not ask you for the current password because the root account can change any password to anything without knowing the current password, including itself. So we'll just go ahead and specify a new password. And it is not a good idea to use the same password as your regular user password. So we'll pick something different this time. Since you cannot really see what I'm typing on the pass on the keyboard, it doesn't really matter anyway. Alright, so this password is also changed. And let's see. What else can we do here to double check and make sure that the persistent partition is in fact being used? Well, we can do something like this. We can go to Applications menu. And there are many programs that are installed already, including um, LibreOffice, which is previously known as OpenOffice. So we'll go ahead and create a regular text, uh, I mean, word processing file. And say, is the persistent partition working? And go ahead and save it. And I'm saving it to the default location, which is inside the home folder. And th in the previous time when I start the system as non-persistent, you still have a home folder, but the home folder is actually in a RAM, a RAM-based file system, which means you know when you reboot the system, you know it's all gone. So this is a good test to see whether the persistent partition is actually working or not. And we we'll just call this test and click save. Did it save it? It well, it saved it, but the title did not change. Oh, okay. I think I have a little bit of problem here. Okay, this it's a display driver problem. Um, we'll go ahead and close this first, and that's it. We'll go ahead and restart the system. Go to Logout under Applications menu and specify Restart again. Okay. And now that it's restarting, we'll go ahead and select the first option using the persistent partition. All right, we are back to our GUI login screen. And we press the enter, uh, we select the default user and enter the password. Well, let's try USER, which is the default password, because that should not work. Click login, and the system tells me authentication failure, which is good because it really should not work this time. So we'll go ahead and use what I think is the new password, which is quite a bit longer. And it does let me log in. So this is a good indicator that um, it is in fact working because it, it preserved the password. And 
We can also find out whether it works or not by looking at the file system to see whether the sample file that we saved earlier is still here. We go to LibreOffice Writer. And then we go to File, Open. And you can see under User, which is my home folder, under the Documents subfolder, we have the file called test.odt, which is the file that we saved a little bit earlier. Double click on it, and we got our file back. And then the next clue, or the other clue, that the system is actually persistent at this point is if you look at the time, it is actually the correct time of this time zone. It is no longer using ET, the, the UTC time zone. So now we have you know everything persistent and the system is ready to go. Thanks for watching.